Hey, what is up? My name is Matt Workman, and welcome to CineTracer version 0.6. Today, we're going to cover the updates to the camera system and what my plans are for it. And if you have feedback for the camera system, there's things that you really want. I am in the process of updating cameras. This YouTube video comment section is a good place to put requests because I will read them and keep them in mind while I'm updating the cameras. First of all, here we are on the flat map, and let's go over what's new and what's not new, and etc. So, the new cameras are the free camera and the geared head, and right out of the gate for 0 0.60, neither of these will save when you save your project. There's a couple reasons for that. I'm trying to keep it uh, kind of loose because there's still more updates that have to happen to them. But if you are really concerned with having to save stuff, uh, the cameras, you're going to need to use the older cameras here. And what's going to happen is over time, I'm going to update, well, the free camera replaces the floaty camera eventually. But once these are uh, fully operational and can save and whatnot, I will update all of these to use the new system, and then they will all save. And so we're basically going to slowly update all of them. And I have some new ideas for cameras as well. And the Vive camera, the handheld Vive tracker camera, that really didn't work very well. It will work great uh, once I update it. So uh, let's look at the new floaty camera or free camera. Right, so we're going to place this down. It goes directly in the ground, which isn't great. But I'm going to switch to editor mode here. And you click it. It has an arrow now, or has the gizmo, which is new, like that. And the big new difference here, besides the fact that you can move it with the gizmo, is that now you can change the sensor size. right? And the sensor size is hyper accurate. I will just say that the one concession I've made is that it takes the sensor size, the width, and it's going to essentially crop the sensor or extend the sensor to make it a 16 by 9 sensor. It just works better that way in CineTracer. If you have a reason that you actually want the actual like 4 by 3 open gate sensor, it is possible. I think most people really are just concerned with uh, the horizontal field of view. Sorry, my phone's on. So anyway, the sensor size is now very accurate. It does keep the width. However, it does crop or extend the um, vertical size here. So what we can do now is choose APS-C full frame, uh, micro four thirds, and we have, uh, I will make a, a more and more cameras here to actually match the different camera sensor sizes. And it gets really kind of deep because there's different modes in the cameras and they crop them. I'm going to do my best to implement that because I need this virtual camera in CineTracer to actually match the real world sensor of your chosen camera if we're going to do mixed reality in the future. So this is all to make this kind of more realistic and better. right? So. Uh, let's look at this in action really quickly. Uh, I'm going to go back to generic and do APS-C, right? So this is like a Super 35 sensor, I think. Uh, I'm going to hit F and come in here. So I'll go frame something up. There's a bunch of new stuff here, but let's just look at the field of view uh, on the little box there. right? So we're pretty much framed up tight on these two here. And uh, I'm going to go in here and switch the sensor to full frame. And when we go back in, you'll see that, hey, it's much wider. And just have to take my word for it, the math is pretty good and pretty accurate here. So now, uh, a big difference uh, from before is how you change the different parameters of a camera. And the way that I designed it before was really bad. And it, it took me a long time to be able to figure out how to do this better. And I think this is a really good approach for many reasons. So if you want to keep your hands on the mouse and keyboard, which is how a lot of people work here, so it's still WASD to move around. The, Mouse looks up and down, space goes up, control goes down. Right? So that's kind of standard. That's probably never going to change. Uh, to change the different parameters, you're going to scroll the mouse wheel. So that's kind of familiar. Uh, but right now, I'm changing the focal length. But if I hit E and I scroll, now I'm changing the f-stop. Hit E again, changing ISO, and I'm scrolling. And you'll see that it'll just cycle through if you hit E, and then Q will cycle back. So I'm going to open up uh, to 1.3 and ISO to like like 100, something like this. Uh, aspect ratio with a little preview here. Uh, it's kind of ugly. I'm still working on it, but it will change just like before. And something that's very new is that you can change the focus distance directly. And we'll look at that as well. And if you want to change the speed that you move at, if you scroll down, we go to creep, which is very slow, but you need it at certain places. And then crawl is like super slow. And then it goes to fly, which is fast, sprint, etc. And walk is kind of like your 200 centimeters per second. I think that's basically what the speed is. It's kind of like your normal movement speed, but you can change the speed this way now. So if you don't like Q&E and scrolling, like I know if you're using like a laptop, um, you may not have a mouse or something like that using the trackpad. 
you can use the arrow keys. It's not written on the HUD, but I'm telling you now, so hopefully you'll watch this. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to change what parameters you're using. And then you can use the, I'm sorry, the right and left arrow keys like this. And then you can use up and down to change uh, the value like this. So it's kind of like a more concrete way, but you do have to take your hands off the keyboard and mouse. So it's kind of up to you which one you like. And also now, again, why I think the system is pretty good, it works completely with controller, which I'm wearing a black shirt, but there's a controller right here. Uh, if you use the D-pad keys or buttons, right, the UI switches over because it recognized you used uh, the, the controller. If you use the left and right D-pad, you switch between the parameters and up and down will change the value of the parameter. So believe it or not, this has taken me honestly years to be able to design this. I'm not a game developer. I mean, I am now. I'm not a trained game developer. Um, so it took me a while to design a system that would work for mouse and keyboard, works for this, and actually will work in VR as well. So there's, there's even more <laughs> to consider than just this. But anyway, that is the new way of changing the parameters using the controller, using the arrows, or using Q and E. So that's a long story there. I'm going to change this back to uh, walk. And let's get into some focus stuff. So uh, what you'll see is that if you focus now, you left click, some stuff is happening. But you actually cannot tell focus. I basically turned focus off. For the preview monitor, it makes performance better, right? Because two views like this is kind of hard in performance. And doing focus on top of it is even more difficult for your computer to do. And it's lower quality. It just doesn't look very good. So I kind of got rid of it. Let me know if you super miss it. But it's a big performance gain to not do focus in this mode. What you're going to want to do is hit V like this. Okay. So now, uh, as I'm in camera, if I go over here and you see the center dot, I click on him. It says manual focus, distance set. Click again, manual focus, distance set. So we're manually setting the focus distance like this. If I move the camera, the focus distance stays at what we set it at, right? It's not tracking this person. It's just saying where it is. So what happens sometimes is you'll go like this, and you're trying to get focus on him, but you actually can't get it right. So in this case, you can um, change the parameter to focus distance, and you can scroll, right? And it'll slowly, one centimeter at a time, change the focus distance like that. So that's something I've been wanting to have in the system for quite a while. Didn't have an elegant way of doing it. Now I do. So say with focus, you want to be able to uh, keep the focus on him while you move around. What you do now is hold, left click, and it says tracked focus point is now set. So now I'll move back and forth like this, and he will stay in focus. If I want to go back to manual focus mode again, I just click again. Manual focus distance is set. So this is very much a simplification from the way that it used to work. Uh, and it all works with just left click. So how do we do this with the controller? So to start moving around, uh, to do left click on the controller or to focus, we're going to hold the right shoulder button here. So I'm going to click the shoulder button like that, shoulder button, right shoulder button. And again, if I hold it, now focus is set. It's been a big effort and want for me to have parity between mouse and keyboard and controller, because I think this is a very comfortable way of controlling the camera. Uh, so we have it now, hopefully. So that's the focus system. That's how you change parameters. And again, V is switching between this kind of, I would say, like operator view and like full camera view. And what we can do now is hit tab. So with tab, the UI goes away completely, and you're seeing the full image. So what might happen is you start framing up here, and you're like, OK, that's the top of the frame. And you'll see this once we have this working with the storyboard system, because this doesn't currently work with the storyboards. Uh, you'll see that the frame is actually up there. So we're actually taking full use of the entire sensor and the entire screen now. This is big redesign to make that work out, get the field of view right, et cetera. Uh, so if you do change the uh, aspect ratio uh, and you get rid of the UI, the center dot goes away, the crosshair, we're going to have guides soon. Uh, but these guides will stay there, because like those are something you'd want to capture if you were doing video like that. And just so that you know the aspect ratio is essentially a letterbox. We're not actually simulating sensor size, uh, squeezing to squeezing, or anything like that. You're taking a 16 by 9 image, and you're just throwing black over it. right? So that's, that's a, lot of way that, a lot of ways that that's a very common way in production for aspect ratio to get implemented, unless you're doing like true anamorphic or something like that. So uh, that is tab with the UI. Uh, that will work in this mode as well, if you just want to like clean everything. Uh, if you turn the UI off, you cannot change parameters. Uh, scrolling, 
shouldn't work. Uh, and changing parameters, I'm hitting Q and E, does nothing. However, focus will still work uh, in this mode. Uh, so that's good to know. So the, one of the last things I want to show is the beginning of our camera marks system. I'm not calling it a timeline because you don't have access to it like a regular timeline would in an animation program, nor do I really want to make, make something that complicated. So the way that the marks work are that you move to uh, the place you want to be, like this, and call this uh, mark 1. Right? This is how it works on set 2. You're going to hold 1. And you saw the little UI change at the bottom right. I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to hold 2, like this. Boom. So now we've set our first and second mark, 1 and 2. To go to the first mark, you're going to hit 1. And you're going to move there over 5 seconds. We'll eventually be able to change how long it takes you to get there, depending on what kind of move you want to do. Now if you hit 2, it's going to bring you back to 2. And this is especially important for the nodo inertia, uh, nodo inertia wheels here uh, to be able to do that. But I think it's important for all the systems. So the easiest to implement was, of course, just this free camera. We're just moving it around. But you can imagine that if you want to record pan and tilt and the cranes and all that, that's a little bit more work. That will be the next update, was bringing this system to that as well. So this gives the beginning of our camera keyframe, camera marks system like this. And again, uh, I do want this to work for the controller. So let's make some new marks up here. Uh, I'm going to change the focal length like this, tilt up. And so to set the mark, in this case, you're going to hold A, like this. That sets the first mark. I'm going to come down here, maybe move in. I'm going to hold B, like this. So now if I hit A, we're going to move to camera mark 1. I could have changed it to be camera mark A, but on set we say mark 1, mark 2, mark 3. So I just thought I'd keep it the same. Hit B, you're going to come back down. So again, you hold 1 or 2 to set it, and you press 1 or 2 under two seconds, something like that, and you'll move to it. So that is the basic change to the cameras that are happening here. There's a lot more happening under the hood to make this possible. Uh, it's kind of the start button to do uh, the UI gone, uh, toggle the UI with the uh, Xbox controller. And it's Y, or the top face button, to uh, switch views. And it is X to get out. So the editor surely does not work with an Xbox controller. Uh, this pawn sort of does. You can walk up to this now. Uh, you do have to be an E, which you have no way of changing that. You can uh, do the right button for this. And then it's not written yet, because I'm still unifying all the controls together. But you could hit X. And now you're in here. So for certain modes, especially the camera, I'm very focused on making the controller completely viable. You can do everything on the controller now, hopefully. Uh, and the rest of the system, certain things will work. We'll kind of find out uh, as time goes on. So that is the update for the camera system. Uh, really quickly to review, uh, these two cameras both use it. I'm going to make a video just on the gear head next. Uh, and these will all get updated to it eventually. These do not save. And the Vive camera had to get decommissioned, but will come back uh, with the updates uh, and work like this as well. Let me know if you have any immediate feedback, any issues with this. I tested this both on PC and Mac, and all of this stuff should be working uh, quite well. So that is it for this video on the cameras, and I'll see you on the next one.